Dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Muslims everywhere in the world are in crisis. In Muslim countries, in Europe, in, in America, in Asia, everywhere, Muslims are in crisis. And you listen to Muslims, and they are blaming governments, politicians, scholars, people, other Muslims, but nobody ever thinks of blaming themselves. Every Muslim, individual or country, believe they are innocent. It's not their fault, it's somebody else's fault. Their behavior, views and opinion are always right. Everybody else is wrong. And if only everyone else will follow what they are saying and what they are doing, the whole world will be great. But not them. Everybody else should follow them. Nobody believes that because we are failing in understanding our personal responsibilities, we are contributing to the crisis of the Muslims in everywhere in the world. Islam is built and teaches us personal responsibility. That's what Islam teaches us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِقَوْمٍ حَتَّى يُغَيِّرُ مَا بِأَنفُسِهِمْ Allah does not change the condition of the people until they change it themselves. You are responsible for yourself. Don't sit at home and say, Oh Allah, I want a job. Oh Allah, make me rich. And you do nothing. Sitting watching football, watching TV, all of that. That's all you're doing. No. Take your personal responsibility seriously. And then ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then he's going to do whatever you're asking. He's going to change your condition. If you don't have a job, he will get you a job. If you don't have enough money, he will give you money. If you have difficulty in your marriage, he's going to solve your problem. But take personal responsibility. First, take the first step. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, كُنْتُمْ خَيْرَ أُمَّةٍ أُخْرِجَتْ لِلنَّاسِ تَأْمْرُونَ بِالْمَعْرُوفِ وَتَنْهَوْنَ عَنِ الْمُنْكَرِ وَتُؤْمِنُونَ بِاللَّهِ You are the best of peoples ever raised up for mankind. You enjoin what is right and forbid, and forbid the wrong and believe in Allah. When Muslims knew their personal responsibility and everybody knew that they are supposed to do what's right and recommend what's right and avoid what's wrong and tell people to avoid what's wrong, we were the best nation on earth. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. And we can go back to being the best nation on earth if we take our personal responsibility seriously. But everybody's saying, everybody's bad, I'm good. If that's the case, why we're in a disaster? Why we are in a situation where everybody, important, unimportant, strong, weak, are pushing us around? Why? Because we're not taking our personal responsibility seriously. And the Prophet ﷺ said, every nation has a trial, a test. And the trial of my nation is wealth. He's telling us why we have a problem. We're ignoring our personal responsibility. Every Muslim is focusing today on money. That's what we're focusing on. How can I make more? What about your personal responsibility? What about your personal responsibility to the community, to Islam, to all of that? Money, money, money. That's talk to me about money. How can I make more? But other than that, that's the only thing. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ is saying, this is our test. The test means that are you going to be attracted to money? Is money is going to lead your life and control your life? Or you're going to take your personal responsibility seriously and start to see what's important for the Islam and the community and the Muslims. Personal responsibility is different from a person to a person. Depending on your position in society, somebody who has a high position, you have a bigger responsibility versus somebody who doesn't have a high position. Your knowledge, your wealth, your expertise. And responsibility means having to carry burdens, fulfilling obligations, and do what is right. That is what personal responsibility is. If we look back when Muslims were the leader, the superpower of the world, we all remember the, 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 the Islamic civilization. 
But what we remember about it is always the rulers that were on top. Sayyidina Umar radiallahu an, Umar ibn Abdul Aziz, Salah al-Din al-Ayyubi, Saladin. We remember all the leaders. But the leaders by themselves cannot do a civilization. What happened is the people around them, the people, everybody there that was around them, whether they are workers, they are scientists, they are teachers, inventors, whatever they are, scholars, planners, they are the one who built the civilization. It's not one person built the civilization. Nobody can build the civilization. But it's the whole nation they built the civilization. And why that? Because each one in the nation took their personal responsibility seriously. They didn't say, it's not my job. Leave it to somebody else to take care of it. Everyone took their job seriously. And that's why we became the best nation, the best civilization at the time. The Prophet ﷺ says, the relationship of the believer with another believer is like the bricks of a building. Each strengthens the other. Look at the example that the Prophet ﷺ, he said, every one of us is a brick. And the whole, every brick is important to have the same building standing. If a brick says, I'm going to relax, I'm not going to do anything, the whole thing is going to collapse. A brick cannot say, the other bricks are going to carry the building. Every brick has a role. Every brick has to strengthen the others. The same way you are supposed to take personal responsibility, the other bricks are supposed to do it. And you notice he didn't say something important. He said, just a brick. So we all are a piece of the puzzle. We are not each one of us separate from the other. For you to succeed, you need the other to succeed. And for the other to succeed, you need to succeed. That's how we are going to build our Muslim nation. Not by each one focusing on yourself and ignoring everything else. And the Prophet ﷺ said, All of you are trustees and are responsible for your subjects. The ruler is a trustee and responsible for his subjects. The man is a trustee of his family and responsible for his subjects. The woman is a trustee in her husband's house and responsible for her subjects. A servant is a trustee of his master's wealth and responsible for his subject. So all of you are trustees and are responsible for your subjects. He just didn't give an inventory of all human beings. He just gave us some examples. So he's saying every human being, you are responsible. Everyone, whether you are in a high position, a low position, you are responsible. You have individual responsibility. You cannot just ignore your responsibility and think that this nation is going to stand up again and be strong and powerful. No, it starts with you. It starts with every one of us. That's how this nation is going to stand up and be powerful again. So what are the kind of responsibilities that you have? I'm going to mention a few of them, not all of them. But the first responsibility you have is your responsibilities toward Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ And I created the jinn and humankind only that, that they might worship me. So Allah is saying, I created you to worship me. So the first thing you owe to Allah is worship Him alone. You cannot worship another person. You cannot worship your money. You cannot worship your position. You cannot worship anything else. You worship Allah alone. And we believe in whatever He commands us to do, to believe in. Whatever He tells us, we have to believe in that. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ إِنِّي جَاعِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَةً And when your Lord said to the angels, I'm going to place in the earth a representative. So now we know he want us to worship and he said, you are representing me. When we are representing him, that means we have to obey what he's telling us. If you're working in a company and the company is selling computers, and then you come one day and say, you know, I don't like computers. I'm going to be selling popcorn. You're going to be on the street. In one second, no hesitation. So you are representing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How come you don't obey what he's telling you? He's telling you to do this and he's telling you don't do that. 
So how come you don't obey him? But when you're at the company, you're afraid of doing anything they don't tell you because you know you're going to be out. So how come you're afraid of the company or not afraid of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So we have, to, we have a responsibility toward Allah to, to fulfill our obligation toward him, to do what he's ordering us to do. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, هُوَ أَنْشَأَكُمْ مِنَ الْأَرْضِ وَاسْتَعْمَرَكُمْ فِيهَا he brought, you, he brought you forth from the earth and settled you therein to construct, to develop, to improve the earth. That's why we, we're here on the earth. So we're not here to spread corruption. We're not here to spread destruction. We're here on earth to make it a better place. The same way the previous generation made it a better place for us. Our generation is supposed to leave this earth better place for the next generation. That's our role in this, in this earth. And that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala expects us to do. Leave that place. When you leave it, the earth should say, you know, I'm better now because that person was on earth. That's what we need to do. The second responsibility we have is our responsibilities toward ourselves. To us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَاتَّقُوا النَّارَ الَّتِي وُقُودُهَا النَّاسُ وَالْحِجَارَةِ Then protect yourselves against the fire whose fuel is of men and stones. So we're supposed to do everything we can to keep ourselves away from hellfire. You owe yourself that. You owe yourself. It's not for somebody else. It's for yourself. What can you do so you keep yourself away from hellfire? And Allah in another verse says, وَلَا تُلْقُوا بِأَيْدِيكُمْ إِلَى التَّهْلُكَةِ And do not throw yourselves into destruction. And how do you do that? By not obeying Allah. The things that He tells you do, you don't do. And the things that He tells you do not do, you do. That's how you destroy yourself. And nobody in their right mind would do that. I just want to see a person that you tell them, you know, there is a burning fire, throw yourself in it. And they're going to say, oh, I love it. I'm going to go in. Nobody would do that. So Allah is saying, hellfire is waiting for those who don't obey me. Why are you throwing yourself in hellfire? You owe yourself to protect yourself from the anger of Allah, from the punishment of the day after, from hellfire. You owe yourself that much. So do everything you can to protect yourself from destruction and from hellfire. The third responsibility is our responsibilities toward other people. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ إِنَّا خَلَقْنَاكُمْ مِنْ ذَكَرٍ وَأُنْثَى وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ شُعُوبًا وَقَابَائِلَ لِتَعَرَفُوا O mankind, we have created you from a male and a female, and made you into nations and tribes, that you may know each other. You notice he said, we are coming from the same source, all of us, all human beings. So we are supposed to live together in harmony. He didn't say we're supposed to fight each other. He didn't say we're supposed to make each other's life miserable. No, he said that we know each other. And when you know somebody, you tend to be more gentle with that person, more kind with that person because you know him. But when you don't know somebody, you just walk by, you don't pay attention. And Allah is saying to know each other. So to respect each other, to be kind to each other. That's what Allah is expecting from us. And you notice he said, we are all created from a male and a female. So we're all brothers and sisters. It doesn't matter if you are Muslim, you're Christian, you're Jew, you don't believe in God. We are brothers and sisters in humanity. We're coming from the same man and woman, from Adam and Eve. So we're supposed to be people respecting each other, not looking down on somebody else oh, because he's not Muslim, because he doesn't believe in God, because whatever it is, we're not supposed to do that. We're supposed to respect each other. Every human being deserves our respect. That's what Allah is telling us. And Allah, in order for us to live, to live with each other as human beings in harmony, he established for us rules and he established for us, you know, uh, uh, laws in every area in our life. If you read the Quran, you follow the Sunnah, there is always a rule for how we should treat each other. 
Allah, how we should treat every other, every human being. It's all of us. Why Allah is doing that? And He's not doing, his, the, the, those rules are not exclusive to Muslims. And when you deal with non-Muslims, you deal with them in a different way? No. Those rules are for dealing with every human being. No exception. And Allah is doing that so we can live in peace. We live in harmony. We don't have wars, we don't have fights, we don't have anger, we don't have, you know, people getting, you know, uh, uh, c committing crime against each other. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala established those rules. And the Prophet والسلام, said, All mankind is from Adam and Eve. An Arab has no superiority over a non-Arab. Nor a non-Arab has any superiority over an Arab. A white has no superiority over a black. Nor a black has any superiority over a white, except by piety and good action. So, we are all human beings, the same. Do not mistreat any other person, never. Because we are the same. The only reason you will be better than somebody else in the sight of Allah, not on earth, is by your good deeds. By your good deeds. But nobody can claim that I'm better than somebody because I did good deeds. Nobody knows your good deeds are what, what the intention behind them. Were you doing it for to impress people or were you doing it for sake of Allah? And if you're doing it really for the sake of Allah, you're not going to go around brag about it. So when you go brag, bra bragging about something good you did, obviously it's not for the sake of Allah. Or there is maybe it's not 100% for the sake of Allah. So what we need is basically, we don't look down, we don't discriminate against somebody for whatever reason. Because he's from this country, because he's a different color, because he's different religion. You never discriminate against anybody. That's against Islam. As Muslim, we have to respect every individual. And in Hadith Qudsi, the Prophet والسلام, told us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, O oh, my servants, I made injustice forbidden on myself, and I made it forbidden amongst you. So do not commit injustice to one another. So a part of our responsibility is to spread justice on earth. When you're treating your spouse, you're supposed to treat your spouse with justice. Don't mistreat your spouse, whether it's your husband or your, your, or your wife. Don't mistreat her. Don't deal with her like in a way that you are the king of the hill, the tyrant, everybody is here to serve you. No. Treat them with justice because Allah has forbidden injustice. Same thing when you treat with your family, your children. Don't commit injustice with them. You treat one different than the other. This one, oh, he's my, my little boy, I love her, my little girl, I love her. And the other one, you just mistreat them. Don't commit injustice with your family, with your other people. Never commit injustice. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is forbidding us from committing injustice. And if we do it, we're going to be asked about it. We think it's something easy, so what's the big deal? But on the day of judgment, you're going to be standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and answering for the injustice that you committed against others. The fourth responsibility I'm going to talk about is our responsibilities toward other creations. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِن مِّن شَيْءٍ إِلَّا يُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِهِ وَلَكِن لَّا تَفْقَهُونَ تَسْبِيحَهُمْ And there is nothing, there is not a thing that glorifies His praise, the praise of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But you understand not their glorification. So of every creation on earth, glorify Allah. Every creation. And we cannot abuse or mistreat or, or torture any other creation. And we know the hadith that we heard about it a lot that says a woman entered the hellfire because of a cat which she locked up. She neither, she neither gave it food nor set it free to eat from the earth. She got into hellfire because of a cat. Because we have a responsibility toward other creation. If you took the responsibility of a cat, then you better be responsible. But not lock it up and not pay attention to the cat and, and let it die. You go to hellfire. You think, a cat? Come on! What's the big deal? 
the cat is a creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah put it on earth for a mission. And the cat is doing its mission. When you abuse that cat and torture that cat, you are accountable in front of Allah. You disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the Prophet والسلام, in another hadith, he's telling us, when you slaughter, slaughter an animal, do it in the best manner by first sharpening the knife and putting the animal at ease. If you think about it, taking responsibility even when you are killing, making end of life for, another anim for an animal, you have to have res the responsibility. Sharpen your knife so the, the animal does not suffer when you're slaughtering the animal. Sharpen the knife and then put it at ease. Don't hurt the animal. Make it relaxed. And in another hadith, the Prophet is telling us, do not slaughter an animal in front of another animal. Look at the sensitivity. Muslim were taking the responsibility seriously. And we have a responsibility toward all other creation. We cannot just abuse them. It's very common, you hear in America that expression, you hear people saying, oh, he got mad and he went home and kicked the dog. This is not in Islam. You cannot go and kick the dog because you're angry. No. I've seen with my own eyes a person in a park. He was in a fight with somebody else and he became angry. He took his dog, he pulled it from his back, raised it in the air and threw him down on the earth, on the ground. What is that idiot? Is that the creation that Allah created to serve you? And that's the abuse you do to that dog? Allah will ask you on the day of judgment for the abuse you're doing to other creation. Our fifth responsibility I'm going to talk about is our responsibilities towards nature and environment. We have a responsibility to use properly everything around us. It is very important for the survival of humanity that every human being use whatever is necessary and don't use excessively everything and don't waste everything. Our job as Muslim is conservation. In everything we do, we're supposed to be people who conserve everything we do. The Prophet والسلام, was one day walking by one of the, the companion and he was doing ablution, wudu. And then he looked at him and he said, what is, the, what is this waste? So the companion looked back and he said, is there waste in the use of water? Come on, this is water. What's the big deal? So he said, yes, even if you are at a flowing river, flowing river, we know the water on the river is going to go to the ocean or to the sea. But still, your responsibility as a Muslim is to conserve. It doesn't matter if it's going to go in the sea and the ocean. That's none of your business. Every drop of water has a mission. There is a purpose of that drop of water. Your job is not to waste it. And that's our responsibility. Sayyidina Abu Bakr anhu, when he was sending the army for fighting, army for war, he's going to be, they are going to be killing and they may be killed. Look at the rules of engagement, a part of it. He said, do not injure date palms and do not cut down fruit trees. Do not slaughter any sheep or cows or camels except for food. We have a responsibility as Muslim and we have to take our responsibility seriously. So you don't kill an animal for the fun of it. People who go out hunting and they kill animals and they're so happy. I killed an animal, I killed the lion, I killed the tiger, or I killed even a bird and I'm not going to eat it. On the day of judgment, we are going to be asked about it because we are responsible for them and we're responsible for all the nature and that's around us. Brothers and sisters, stop blaming everything around us. There was a study that was published and it says how long we live on earth is 80% depending on our genes and 20% and is our responsibility. 80% the, the genes we have. You come from a family that lives 100 years, you come from a family that lives 60 years, it may get higher, lower, whatever, but 20% we control. You take drugs, you drive crazy on the freeway and you, you commit accidents, things like that. We control 20%. But the same study says that the kind of life, the quality of life, 80% is our responsibility under our control 
and 20% is in our genes. So 80% how you live your life is in our control. How to make a difference in this life is under your control. It's your responsibility to make your life better, to live a happy life, a successful life. And 20% is not in your hand because you may have inherited diabetes from your parents, so you're not gonna live a comfortable life or something else. But 80% is under your control. It's part of your responsibility. So we have to start taking responsibility for ourselves and our actions. And if we do that, our nation, inshallah, will be unbeatable.